Did you need some ink sacks? Hello everybody, this is Theron. Welcome to Minecraft Land Party. And this looks a little different from last time, I bet. There's still redstone, but this is the the one chunk squid farm. Let's take a look. Come on, you can go down. Down. So Oops, that was that was really lame. I screwed that up big time. So this is the squid farm. Barb makes things is on. And and she has a little squid farm area out by in the desert over by the iron farm and all that and this is really or, or also she could be out by the cove so this is really sensitive to mob cap so that's why it's not doing anything uh, it's not entirely the case of why it wasn't doing anything last episode that was because we i've been i'm running spigot server on the server here and Spigot does some weird things with certain mobs, especially the aquatic mobs. And so I had to do some tweaks to the settings to get squids to really spawn uh, anywhere near what they would spawn in on the vanilla server. So this is the this is what I did. It's pretty straightforward. It is four blocks tall uh, of water, the bottom block, and then I've got uh, I think this is 10 by 9 by 10 or something like that. 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Yeah, it's 9 by 10. And uh, I have a little zigzag pattern of these little things. So no block in this inside here is uh, not next to a solid block. And it's redstone is a solid block that I'm using. And again, that's because redstone is semi-transparent and that actually causes the water to flow downwards. A little bit more than just putting the squids in water so I've got four blocks of water and that's even though the squids can spawn much lower if you put like you know 15 blocks of water and the squid spawn in there it takes them forever to fall out so this just speeds that up and then I'm using signs to keep the water up in there I've got some hoppers and the leaf blocks are here to encourage pack spawning so uh, so the water block below here, when it checks to see, can I spawn things? And it says, oh yeah, I can spawn squids. And it goes and looks around to see if there's other blocks nearby where the that mob could potentially spawn, even if they're not able to spawn. <laughs> so it, the rules are kind of weird. But if there's enough space around that has potential spawning sites, then it has a chance of being a pack spawn. So instead of spawning just one squid, it'll spawn three or four of them. And that helps with the uh, with the spawning quite a bit. So, so then I've got a uh, little, just a grid of hoppers. It's not too much. And they, they fall straight down. So out of here, they blow bloop and they hit here. They do not fall off to the side. So it didn't, don't need extra hoppers to catch them as they spread. Uh, and and actually when I'm here and nobody else is on uh, Then I'll this thing will be filled with like a dozen squid at a time, which is awesome So I had a, a chest down here that I was collecting into but I I built a quickie little dropper uh, Ladder here It's pretty straightforward when things go into the into the bottom dropper here this uh, Hopper clock goes tick, 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 alternates these uh, redstone torches. And because it's never ticking uh, droppers that don't have anything in it, it doesn't make any noise. It's silent. I, I'm doing the same. I have the same ladder that I'm elevator that I'm using in the, the mob farm underneath my place and also at the guardian farm. So nothing, nothing special here. I suppose I could choose to make a solid block elevator and just have this guy here get ticked but this works and it's reasonably cheap droppers are cheap and it's just redstone torches really a couple hoppers so that's uh so that's that and 
I wanted to bring it up to the top so I don't have to come down here every time to check and see what my ink sac situation is like. And so we go plop and we run over here to this chest. So that's cool. Um, woo so I've got, you know, I've got a few ink sacs. It's doing pretty well. I'm, I'm, I'm reasonably happy with it. When, again, when nobody else is on anywhere near water, this thing actually works pretty darn well. I'm kind of impressed with how well it works. So that's, uh, that's very cool. And while I've just been in here working on the pyramid, we'll talk about that in a minute. It's just been kind of going and doing this thing. Don't fall down there. Probably wouldn't kill me, but it would hurt. Uh, this will get enclosed. I brought it up here, so behind all this, I can build a wall. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, I'm going to build a little enclosure, a little building. And I'm going to put this inside it. This is... Ah! No one ever said I was good at this game. All right, so this is a uh, this is a shulker lo shulker box loader. So I should probably get some shulker boxes to demonstrate. This is pretty straightforward. Um, it's it's a little bit uh, shall we say ugly. It's probably a much more compact way of building it, but I just kind of built it on the fly here in survival. Uh, so this hopper here would be come off the top of the elevator, and it goes down there. Shulker box sits here on top of this dispenser, which would be loaded with uh, empty shulker boxes. And as, when it fills up, this comparator turns on because it's it's got a uh, redstone block here next to it to say say ensure that it only turns on when the shulker box is completely full, which pulses this piston, which uh, breaks the shulker box, which drops into this. Uh, hopper which then feeds into this chest uh, it also then goes up to this chain here and the only reason I have four uh, repeaters on here is for timing for a little reset button that I have over there and it comes down here and pulses the dispenser so after the piston breaks the shulker box the dispenser puts a new one there so basically as the stuff comes in it loads up when the shulker box fills up it gets deposited into this chest. So this chest will eventually just be filled up with shulker boxes filled with ink sacs, which is, I think, is cooler than having a large storage system. It makes it easier to just grab a bunch and go. Uh, and then over here, and the reason this is up here is because I wanted to be able to feed the dispenser so this chest I would put empty shulker boxes in so it would have more than just nine uh, so it'd be this double chest a couple of hoppers and the uh, dispenser worth of empty shulker boxes and then I could go and refill it of course when needed I put this button here uh, so that I could just break the shulker box when it's sitting here. The downside to having a hopper above it is you can't open the shulker box that's sitting there. Um, so you can't check to see how full it is. So, But if you're like, oh, I need whatever ink sacs I happen to have, you can push this button, it breaks the shulker box, and then triggers the dispenser. So it, the shulker box, however much it has in it, shows up in here. And then the a new empty shulker box uh, gets placed and uh, these four repeaters are there because the pulse length of a button here is long enough that it was causing the piston to extend and then the dispenser was trying to fire before the piston retracted so this just ensured that the dispenser didn't fire until after the piston was done so anyway as I said this is probably about the the clumsiest shulker loader system that there is. I know that there are a bunch of others, but I figured this out without referencing any videos or anything. So if I can come up with a better design, I might use it, but this kind of fit all my needs of incoming stuff here and a reset button and being able to 
supply shulker boxes there. So that's uh, that's that. I have to rebuild this over there and then tear this down. But uh, but I have this as a reference, so that works. And I can see I was starting to do some of the redstone on on the sandstone, and I switched to slabs. Anyway, pain in the butt. But uh, but eventually this will over there pop up. Oops, get filled up with shulker boxes filled with ink sacks, which I think is pretty cool. And again, reset button in case. Uh, yeah. So other thing is this should look a little different and it's not a wide grand entrance stairway to the pyramid because if I go up here I'll bonk my head on the wall bonk this is not the way out instead what this is is this uh, uh, descending uh, stair stairway or descending passage so let's go up to the entrance. So I'm trying to model the inside of the pyramid and trying to be true to life of the Great Pyramid of Giza. So here's the entrance and it's in the correct place and the correct height off the ground and the correct distance off center on the correct side. It's all good. Oh, look at all the beasties out there. Yeah, huh. And sorry for the air conditioner if that if you can hear that it's uh it's the coming to the end of July and it is it's nine o'clock at night and it's still over ninety degrees outside so it's uh it's a little warm and now I've got the doors closed in here to be recording so it's getting a little warm in the room so I'm not going to turn off the air conditioning ah lots of beasties cool entrance. So the descending passage in the Great Pyramid is cramped. Apparently, a, a like a six foot person could not um, walk comfortably down it. it. You sort of have to crouch. Uh, so this is so that's why I've got this so that you're bonking your head, and I wanted to put the lighting super sparse so that it would get dark and moody, and you come down this torch here marks the point at which the ascending passageway needs to start going up here and that will lead up to the queen's chamber and the king's chamber uh, but I have I haven't started working on that yet and then down here this is the floor level of the pyramid so the the ascending passage will start going up like that and the king's and the queen's chamber and the king's chamber are about midpoint of the pyramid. So, but if you can, and I'm going to do something with the this entrance here because this isn't the pyramid. The great the great pyramid of Giza, of course, is not hollow. Um, I do want to leave this. I'm not going to fill in the whole pyramid with sandstone. That would be just ridiculously insane. Uh, and I do want. I want to build a few more farms like this. So that's um, so I'm going to do something with the the doorway here, um, but haven't quite entirely figured that out yet. So as you continue to go down the descending passageway, uh, we get down to the bottom. It opens up into a the the lower chamber, the uh, which is below. Obviously, it's below ground level or what what they call bedrock the, the bedrock that the pyramid is built on and so this is about the midpoint of the pyramid right here uh, and then there's this room and it's and it's not symmetrical it sort of juts off to one side and I have no idea what this room actually looks like and I'm not entirely sure exactly how big it is so I'm kind of estimating from blueprints that I'm seeing online and then on the back side of it there's another hallway that goes off horizontally and just ends bonk um and i don't know if anyone has any ideas or uh understanding or theories about what this was heading towards but they didn't they never finished it uh, so this is kind of fascinating to me and it's making me want to learn more about 
the pyramid or at least as much as as we know about the pyramid so anyway this is this is what I'm doing down below so this is when I talk about finishing the interior of the pyramid this is what I'm talking about and I like the fact that you can sit down here and look up at that boop and see the sky uh, which is kind of cool uh, and I guess this passageway from down below looks up at a particular time people think that it points at a particular star I don't know um, might just be coincidence might be finding patterns where none exists because human beings are particularly good at that but that's uh, so that's what I've got so far as I said I have to start working on the ascending the hallway which will be built very similar to this uh, and then I might start building additional stuff the uh, the lower chamber down here has uh, it butts up just on the other side of the walls down here are caves but I've got tons of room right I have I mean the whole world it's a it's a big world so I have the ability of adding additional chambers and doing other stuff down here and I have to decide where I'm going to put the the portal so I could put the portal right down here boop and I think we're close enough we should be close enough to where the actual portal is that moving it in here isn't going to impact anything and I have to figure out the lighting because this is a little too well lit um, so I may move this lighting into the floor or try to hide it in the ceiling or something I don't know I would like I would love to be able to get rid of all these torches and still have it lit just enough to keep the mobs out and this is all sandstone so I'm probably going to start playing around with other blocks so put some like smooth sandstone as trim like around the doors or around the walls or something decorate it up a little bit and then I might start playing with the uh, glazed terracotta which isn't exactly historically accurate but it's colorful in a way that they think the interior and the exterior of the pyramids were uh, were the exterior of the pyramid they think was was like gleaming white uh, but the casing stones of the pyramids were uh, uh, centuries ago stolen <laughs> removed off the pyramids and used as building material for other for other structures so my casing stones are of course these stairs these stair blocks all the beasties are gone um, but yeah so so anyway oh and I also took out the beacon but because it wasn't doing me much good anymore cool so I think that's I think that's what's been going on over here uh, I don't think um, yeah I don't think there's there's much else I've been I've been working on this I've been trying to build up the uh, my my ink supplies a little bit um, Yep, actually picked up a few more ink sacks just while we were recording here. Um, and at some point here, actually it's probably at a point where I could do it now. I can, uh, whoa, hello, Squiddy. Yeah, they, they still spawn in there. Uh, I probably need to do some work in here. I half slabbed up some of this. This floor is probably well lit enough that I don't have to worry. Oh yeah, totally. So I could probably just block up this wall. And I have blocks to do that. And these. So I can just do this. And plop, plop. And we're kind of done. Yeah. So this is pretty cool. I think this, this, uh, relatively small structure I think it works pretty well um, I could expand this of course and I, I could take up another chunk and, and sort of expand it over I can make this pretty large and it would just get that much more effective but uh, that's okay I kind of like the the fact that this all fits inside one chunk um, it's an arbitrary constraint but I think it's kind of cool and as I said, I'd like to, uh, there's another, let's see here. Oops. 
so I could build another one chunk farm right here. Uh, I need to figure out if there's like a uh, slime chunk in here because I could do a little slime farm in here as well. It's, it would be really cool if there were a multiple chunk slime area. Hey kitty. Hi. Look at me. Hi. How are you? Meow. So anyway, that's it. Um, making making progress. Still working on stuff. Today is July 20th. And it is the anniversary of the Apollo 11 moon landing. It's kind of a kind of an exciting thing. It's 48 years since the moon landing. And that means in eight days, I will be 48 years old. So, because uh, I was born just about a week after the moon landing. Um, so that's, uh, uh, I was born while the astronauts were in quarantine after returning from the moon. They did not stay on, the Apollo 11 uh, crew did not stay on the moon very long. Because it was the first one and they didn't know what to expect. So they were prepared to go out for... I don't know, several hours and then just come back. And that was the goal, just to make sure that they could do it. But, uh, so yeah, next year will be, not next year, 20, 2019 will be the 50th anniversary. And I expect that'll be kind of a big deal, as it should be. So, uh, I'm going to, recording this now. I've got an episode already edited, which I will release next week, and then this will go up the week after. I wanted to get this recorded now because uh, I'm going to Las Vegas this weekend, and we're going to go see some magic shows, and going to go take a helicopter tour of the Grand Canyon, and we're going to go um, have a fancy, expensive, nice dinner. And have fun. So that's uh, going to take a little mini vacation. It was we were planning on doing it closer to my actual birthday, but uh, timing didn't work out because we really wanted to see, or let's put it this way, I really wanted to see Piff the Magic Dragon. And uh, he's doing uh, on my birthday. He's doing an appearance at the Magic Castle in Hollywood, which normally would be a good thing because I can. I can get guest passes to the Magic Castle pretty easily, but uh, that particular weekend, they are uh, members only. They do not accept guest passes on some days because they have special events, and there's a special event going on next week, which usually happens around the time of my birthday. Uh, it's Young Magicians Week. I think that's the special event, so I called to see if we could get in, and of course, no, no, no luck. So we have to go to Las Vegas where he has a show at the Flamingo uh, that he does three or four days a week in between all his uh, road gigs, which is uh, pretty, it's pretty crazy. He's pretty busy, but uh, he's also very funny. So um, that's, that is going to be exciting. I've never seen him perform live. I've seen him on TV, of course, on America's, Get Tal America's Got Talent and uh, Penn and Teller Fool Us. But that's that. So anyway, that's that's what's going on in my life. So um, and that's all that's been going on here. So that's it. Uh, I think we'll wrap it up. Thank you for watching. This is Theron. It's been Minecraft Land Party. Bye.